Andreas Giorgio here in the build-up to Glory Collision, the biggest pay-per-view in the history of Glory, and now joined by the Glory Kickboxing Welterweight World Champion, Nikki Holskin. Nikki, we are fast approaching the biggest event, to the most anticipated event in kickboxing history, Rika Verhoeven Badahari. You're also on the card against Cedric Dumbe. As we approach the final hours before the show, how do you feel right now? Yeah, I feel very good. Uh, I eat and drink a lot today. So uh, it was the weigh-in today. I was uh, yeah, perfect as always. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go now. Yeah. Let's just quickly talk about your food preparation. Obviously, it's not too far for you to travel. You get to have some lovely home-cooked meals from your wife. I just saw you eating there. How good is it to have that home-cooked meal here in Oberhausen? Yeah, it's the best uh, to eat your own food, what you like and uh, where you get strong from. And uh, the best nutrition, everything is in it and the vitamins. So, uh, yeah, my wife uh, prepared everything at home and we bring it here. So uh, that's perfect for me. Yeah. Because it's not a long trip for you, is it? Yeah, it's like one hour drive. So, uh, yeah. It's a home fight. Yeah. And, you know, with bringing in guys like you and Rico, with it only being an hour away, and I know Rico's not too far away either, was it the whole point of attracting that Dutch market as well? Yeah, I think so. I think that's why a lot of uh, Dutch people come uh, to watch, because it's close and uh, yeah, a few big uh, Dutch fighters on the card. So, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Let's talk about Doombe, your opponent, Cedric Doombe. There's been a bit of heated words exchanged between both of you. Uh, it's gone back and forth on social media, and, and I believe today you said they had bad breath as well. <laughs> um, no, I don't say I don't say he had bad breath. I say he had uh, a dirty mouth of dirty talking, mouth. Okay. so he has to brush his teeth maybe, and then he had uh, good words. But yeah. uh, I don't do trash talk. He is only the guy who uh, trash talking. So. But yeah, maybe he do that uh, because he's feared or something and try to make me, me uh, try to give me some fear from him, but that won't work. Do you not like it when your opponent tries to, to trash talk you and get in your head a bit? Yeah, it's only motivating me and maybe they think they're in my head, but it's only motivating me. Mm. I will work harder, I will train harder, I will get more sharper and yeah, I'm ready uh, to eat the whole event. Yeah. Well, you just wrapped up um, a big series of fights for yourself against Myrtle Gronhart in Denver. The end of that story, most people w would believe now, with you getting the age over Myrtle. Do you think that's the end of that chapter there with Mr. Gronhart? Yeah, but Mr. Gronhart has finished. Uh, we are friends now. Oh, okay, uh, right. Even he uh, yelled today, uh, Cedric, you're, you're, going, you're going to get your ass whooped. <laughs> He, he when, when I had to stare down. Yeah. So uh, afterwards, I go to him. I say thanks for the support. And uh, yeah, he was uh, vlogging, you know, on YouTube. And um, he talks with my child. And now I like him as a person. Before it was bad blood, but uh, we are all so young, yeah. so young and hungry, and we want to win. Yeah, and I win three times. I think the, the case is cleared now. Okay, and uh, he lost from uh, Cedric, so I'm gonna kick uh, Cedric's ass uh, for him. Now. Yeah. What was it that, that turned the wheel that made you friends? Was it just that final victory? Do you kind of just accept that, you know, we've, we've done so much for the sport together and, you know, now let's be friends? Yeah, what you say, that was it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it was an interesting rivalry anyway. I mean, I was there in the Amsterdam Rye when you guys packed out. Yeah. You sold out the Amsterdam Rye for your fight and people called it the fight of the year. Yes. Now you're here again for another sold out show in Oberhausen, in the Kolnig Pilsner Arena. For you? And I know it's often up and down in, in kickboxing because sometimes there's huge events with huge cards and thousands and thousands of people in attendance and sometimes it's not just because of different territories and different markets. For you, do you prefer to be there when, it, when there's a huge crowd, there's a sold out you know, vibe in the arena and, and everybody around the world is talking about it? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice to fight on those events like this. It's uh, packed out and uh, a lot of yeah, fans, a lot of Dutch people also. I think 10,000 people came uh, from the Netherlands. Yeah. So for me, it's like a home fight. Uh, yeah, and I think Cedric will be in the dark house tomorrow. So uh, yeah, for me, it makes me stronger. And uh, yeah, I feel very good. I feel very good. There's been a lot of talk because of just how good you have been in your kickboxing career and how dominant you have been in your kickboxing career that people don't really know what the long-term plan is for Nikki Holskin, what the long-term plan for you is. Is kickboxing in that long-term picture? I don't know, man. It's, yeah, it's difficult because you have to make money. And uh, with this job I have, I make money. And I'm uh, lucky I'm good at it. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, it still uh, gives me money, so I still have to fight. But uh, I'm also boxing. Yeah. I'm 12 and 0 with boxing, eight KOs, and uh, yeah, getting popular by the year. And I want to, yeah, when I can make uh, good money with boxing, it's automatically I will make the switch to. Uh, I will make the switch to boxing. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of been talked about, you know, a lot. You making the switch to boxing, and the same has kind of been said about Rico making the switch to MMA. Do you think it's a shame that kickboxing can't keep a hold of of the big stars? I think it's a shame, yeah, because we are so, so well-trained athletes and we have to do just as much as what uh, the UFC top-level fighters have to do. And they walking away with the millions and we walk away with a uh, thousand euros. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's too bad for us that we choose the wrong spot <laughs> uh, that the, uh, and that the media is not uh, giving the attention we, we need and the sponsors we need and the money we need so uh, after our career we have to do uh, our uh, our best to make a living because it's not something where we get rich of maybe the Rico Bada fighter uh, will earn them some money but uh, in our category it's uh, it's a hard uh, it's a hard knock life yeah has that money trickled down because it is a bigger card do you feel like you're being well well treated for a, a, a much bigger card than maybe you have, may have fought on in the past I don't know. It's not that I have more money than less uh, the other fights because I have a contract. Yeah. In the contract, it's uh, you get this for the fight, win or lose. If you're champion, get, get extra this and uh, so many tickets for you, so many hotel rooms for you. So after this fight, my contract is over. Okay. So then I can negotiate. But you're looking to renegotiate with Glory. Of course, of course. Yeah. I'm looking okay. forward. Yeah. I want to go one or two years, no problem. Right, that's interesting. So uh, the boxing is more of the long term, whereas, but you're happy, you're content right now to stay here with Glory Kickboxing. Yeah, of course. I am the champ and uh, I want to stay uh, champ for more years, if it's possible in my, in my body. So, uh, yeah, but I'm still feeling strong. I train very hard. I, I, don't, I don't miss trainings. I train every day two, two times. If I'm tired, I take a day rest. I listen to my body. I take care of my body. And... Uh, I'm lucky I have a wife and two children, I'm a really houseman, uh, when I finish uh, training in the morning I go home, I uh, walk the dog, I, uh, <laughs> I get my children from school, I have an own, uh, an own closing shop, uh, my wife is working every day there, so uh, yeah, I'm just a, a, a houseman, a house guy, if, I'm tra if I stop training then I'm at home with my children, so I take care of my body very good, I take my rest, I do everything very good and that's what makes me... Uh, I think successful. Well, final question now. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here and ask you your thoughts on the main event at Glory Collision. Rico Verhoeven, Badahari, as we've seen today in that intense stare down, the world is talking about it. If I was to ask you right now, Nikki, who you're picking in that fight, who you think is going to win, who would you say? I don't know because Rico is the all round kickboxer and he's like me, a real champion who trains really hard and who, is, who has got a good rhythm. Yeah, and Bada is a really strong guy. He didn't fight for a, uh, for a long time. I don't know what his, how he, he gets in the ring tomorrow. So we, I can, yeah, after, after three minutes, then we can talk again. And then I can say what, who's going to win. Okay. Because I don't know if he is ex exhausted uh, after uh, a half a minute or two minutes. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's really difficult to pick someone. Everyone has kind of been, that's what you've just said there is basically an echo of what everyone has been saying, which is what obviously what makes it interesting and why everybody wants to watch the fight. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But Nikki, of course, really do appreciate your time. The world's weight champion of the world, wishing you the best of luck against Cedric Dumbay tomorrow. All for the win. Hashtag all for the win. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Cheers.